Hello friends, this video on cell cycle and cell division part 1 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Topics to be covered in this lesson are cell cycle, cell division, prokaryotes, when we'll talk about the binary fission, then we'll talk about cell division in eukaryotes where we'll discuss about mitosis and its significance and meiosis and its significance. So cell cycle. By now we all have a fair idea about what are cells. So cells are the basic functional and structural unit of each and every living organism. We also know what a cell made up of, the different cell organelles present inside, how a cell uh, functions, how the different organelles perform their own job. So we have fair idea about all those stuff. Now the question is, how do more and more cells form? How the cell formation take place? So in this lesson, we are going to concentrate on how more and more cells are formed. So that part of the cell. So that is why this lesson says cell cycle and cell division. So we'll see how cell divides to form more cells, how the entire life cycle of a cell goes. So that is our agenda here in this lesson. So this is not a very lengthy lesson, but a very, very important concept. You need to understand it very clearly. You look at the variety of organisms which we see around us. Any living organism. On the slide, you can see an elephant and you can also see a baby elephant. This baby elephant grows into a huge elephant. So when the size increases, that definitely means that the number of cells inside the body of an adult elephant is a lot more than the number of cells which are present inside the body of a baby elephant. So the, the increase in the body or the, this growth of the elephant is due to the fact that more and more cells are being formed inside the body. Similarly, you talk about any other organism, whether you talk about a fish or a giraffe or human beings. So everywhere you actually see there is growth, which we can actually see when you were one year old and when you are 20 years old, there is a lot of difference in your size, right? Why? Because you have grown up. So how does that growth take place? That happens due to repeated cell divisions. By cell division, more and more cells are formed. Now as the number of cells increases, the size increases and that is what we define as growth. Now that is one aspect where we talk about cell division. So growth is just one aspect. Otherwise also you would have seen the process of reproduction. For example, you take human beings. So human beings reproduce. So more and more human beings are formed. Now this process of reproduction, we all, we all are aware of how reproduction takes place. We have already discussed all those stuff in our previous lessons. Now the question is, go to the basic of reproduction. How reproduction happen? If I talk about sexual reproduction as in case of human beings, it happens with the help of the gametes, the sex cells that is the sperm and the ova. So how are those sex cells produced? So they are also cells. So from where are those cells getting produced? So from where are those cells coming into picture? So they also come by cell division. So how the cell divides, how cell division takes place, how cell division ensures that it is going to produce a specific type of cell. So all that we'll cover here. You talk about microorganisms like uh, yeast where we see the phenomenon of budding which take place to form new organism. A small outgrowth appears on the body and then that separates and grows into a new organism. So here again the question, same question, how this growth as well as reproduction is happening from the perspective of a cell. You talk about amoeba there also you see the process of binary fission that is the amoeba splits into two halves. And that is how it increases in number. So initially it was one, 
but after the split it is 2. Now again each of this will split so this will again form 2, this will again form 2. So basically you started with 1 and the number increases to increase to 2 then later it increased to 4 and then again it will increase to 8 and it will go on the process will continue. So the number of cells will keep on increasing. You talk about a hydra where again a small outgrowth appears in the form of a bud and which separates and grows into a new individual. So whenever we talk about the process of reproduction or whenever we talk about the process of growth, a question comes to our mind that how does the process start? So how the cells are increasing in number, how the cells divide. So this lesson is dedicated to answer all these questions. So now we'll answer the first question, why cell division, why the cell needs to divide. As I mentioned before, the first thing is growth because growth is one evident uh, uh, process or evident phenomenon which you can very easily relate to because it is something which you can see, which you visualize. So when you talk about growth, let us talk about human beings to make you understand it even better. When I talk about growth, you think about a baby which is yet to be born. So the baby is still inside its mother's womb. Now when a baby is born, it is very tiny, it is so small, almost it looks somewhat like this. Gradually it grows, it again grows and finally it becomes an adult human being. So that is how this, these are the phases all of us have gone through, right? So how this growth is taking place? The growth happens due to cell division because more and more cells are formed. And these cell, so and if there is no cell division, what will happen? There will be no growth. So if there is no growth, the entire life process will stop. Why? Because let us suppose if there is no growth, first of all, all the processes will stop. If there is no growth, you will never grow. You are always going to be a kid. Moreover, how will you be born, even this baby? The small baby which is born, it was not directly implanted into the womb. Now, when the fertilization, the process of sexual reproduction take place, a zygote is formed, so which is a small cell. Now, this gradually divides and forms a cluster of cells. These cluster of cells keep growing and gradually different organs. Some of these cells group together to form tissues. Some of these tissues group together to form organs like heart, lungs, kidneys. And that is how this baby is formed. So it all started with one cell. That cell undergoing repeated cell division gave rise to all these organisms. So if the process of cell division is not there, so life would not be there, new life will not form, the process of reproduction will not at all take place. So if there is no reproduction, what will happen? Life will not exist on earth for an indefinite period of time. You talk about any living organism, whether it is human beings, lions, tigers, birds, fishes. So every living organism has a definite lifespan beyond which it is not going to survive. But since the living organisms reproduce, so even if that organism dies, some other organisms are there to survive and that is how life survives. For example, if you talk about your family, maybe your great great ancestors, say your great great grandfather, they would have passed away. But then the next generations are still surviving, the next generations are still there. So the process of reproduction is very very important for the survival of living organisms and for the process of reproduction to take place, cell division is extremely important. It is also useful in repairing damaged tissues. You would have often seen that um, you injure yourself sometimes. You injure yourself, your say your finger got cut with some sharp object. So what happens, you, you can actually see that the skin on your finger is, it, it is completely gone and it is fully, blood is coming out of it and the skin is not there. A small part, I'm not saying that the entire finger is not there. I mean the finger is there, it is just that a small part of the skin, skin is not there. So what do you ideally do? You put some antiseptic or you put some ointment or you wrap it with a bandage 
and you just leave it for some time maybe depending upon the cut you may leave it for a day or two and then gradually you see that new skin replaces that area correct so gradually new skin comes in that area so here if you see it, the wound is no more there how does that happen from where does that new skin comes that comes from cell division new cells are formed and those new cells form the tissue and that tissue form the layer of your skin right so these kind of damaged tissues now this wound can not only happen externally on your skin it can also happen internally that is inside your body sometimes there might be some damage to some of the cells inside your body it is not only about damage it also happens that this because see the cells are not going to live forever so even the cells have a life span so when a cell dies there has to be a cell which will replace the died cell right so cell division helps to repair damaged tissues or to replace the dead tissues so that means also it is very very important because if there is no cell division in that case if you get a small cut it will remain the same forever what will happen in that case blood will keep on coming out of it forever and I mean that, that is not going to help you because your body is going to lose blood or if that area is kept open in that case dust and dirt will enter your body and it will cause it will harm your body it will cause uh, it will affect the life processes taking place inside your body adversely so the, again this is another important reason why cell division is important next is as i said it plays a very very ro important role in the process of reproduction because for reproduction when i talk about reproduction i'm talking about sexual reproduction however it also plays a very important role in asexual reproduction we'll see that as we go ahead with the lesson now when we talk about sexual reproduction we need gametes for fusion to take place because there has to be a fusion between a male gamete and a female gamete only then the process of reproduction will happen now how are these gametes produced how are the male and the female sex cells produced now those sex cells are also produced by the process of cell division so if you do not have the sex cells itself in that case there will be no sexual reproduction so the process of reproduction will stop when you talk about human beings the, what are the male and female gametes male gametes is your sperm and the female gamete is the egg or the ovum so fusion between the sperm and the ovum gives rise to the zygote and zygote after repeated cell divisions form the baby and the baby again after repeated cell division gradually grows to become an adult and that is how life continues so you see starting from the birth of a living organism till the growth and its development and everything cell division plays a very very important role so when you talk about the cells inside the human body inside the human body you have so when you talk about the cells inside human body each and every cell inside the body has 46 chromosomes total so that is 23 pairs of chromosomes now i don't think i need to explain you what is chromosome chromosome is present is that part which is present inside the nucleus of a cell and it holds the genetic material so out of these 23 pairs of chromosomes you see all of them exist in pairs so th this is the 23rd pair so all these 22 pairs they are autosomes whereas the last one is the sex chromosome so where one comes from the father and the other comes from the mother so we know all these things correct now here what we are going to see is when you look at each of these sex cells and when you look at all other body cells they are of different types so we will see how are the body cells produced or how do cells divide to produce the body cells or the somatic cells and how do the cells divide to produce the specialized sex cells so that is also cell division plays a very important role so these are some of the very important reasons because of which cell division is a very important topic or cell division is something which is very very critical thank you please visit www.examfear.com 
to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.